for our next news special report. Got some breaking news that'll make your head spin. MSNBC's big names caught in a web of deception. Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Joy Reid. Not where you thought they were. The Republican National Convention in Milwaukee? Think again. We're blowing the lid off a scandal that goes right to the heart of media trust. Where are these talking heads hiding? And what are they afraid of? Stick around for a bombshell report that will have you questioning everything you see on TV. The truth is right here. Now, folks, the MSNBC scandal is like fool's gold, shiny on the outside and worthless underneath. And speaking of gold, it's at $2,400 an ounce this year. Why? Because our dollar is getting weaker, just like MSNBC's credibility. While they're faking locations, smart Americans are protecting their wealth. Global Gold Investments is your trusted source for precious metals and retirement solutions. Call that number on the screen, 888-700-4148 now. Mention Next News for VIP treatment. They're offering a five-year IRA fee waiver on qualified rollovers. Don't wait. Call 888-700-4148 or click IRAGoldProof.com in the description below. Secure your future while MSNBC secures their fake backdrops. Now back to our explosive report. That's right. Diving into the bombshell story, MSNBC, the network that claims to be a beacon of truth, has been caught red-handed in a massive deception. We're talking Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Joy Reid, the so-called elite of the liberal media, faking their presence at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Take a look at this image. Rachel Maddow looking all serious with RNC Milwaukee apparently behind her. But guess what? She's not even in Wisconsin. She's cozied up in a New York studio with a giant LED screen doing the heavy lifting. This isn't just a white lie, folks. It is full-blown deception. Now, you might be thinking, so what? They're just using some fancy tech. But here's the kicker. While MSNBC's top brass was playing pretend, other networks had boots on the ground. CNN's Jake Tapper, Anderson Cooper, they were actually there facing the music. And speaking of facing the music... Hi, Jake. Laura Limerick here. What do you think about Joe Biden's remarks the other day that it was time for President Trump to be put in the bullseye? Do you think that Joe Biden should issue an apology for calling for President Trump to be put in a bullseye? <laughs> do you think that CNN's rhetoric and their demonization of Donald Trump over these last eight years has led to people opening fire on President Trump, almost assassinating him on stage? As one of the biggest offenders and per perpetuators of fake news, that's why President Trump calls you fake tapper, do you have any remorse for your reporting, which has led to an attempted assassination on President Trump? Will you condemn Joe Biden, Jake, calling for President Trump to be put in a bullseye? Do you condemn any of your fake reporting that has led to an attempted assassination? I mean, don't you have any remorse, Jake? You don't have any remorse, Jake. No remorse for the incitement and the demonization of President Trump at CNN. Yeah. The Russia collusion hoax, all of the false accusations of him raping somebody, the fake indictments. Here we have Jake Tapper. He always has something to say on TV, but doesn't want to condemn his rhetoric against President Trump or Joe Biden. Jake, can you please, please, Jake, can you please condemn what Joe Biden said? Well, look, Jake Tapper always has so much to say. He has so much to say on TV, but he doesn't want to condemn Joe Biden when he says put Trump in a bullseye. Why won't he do it? I don't understand. Why won't CNN condemn their rhetoric against President Trump? Shameful. <laughs> I love it. That's Laura Loomer confronting Jake Tapper at the RNC. Notice how uncomfortable he looks? That's what real accountability looks like, something that Maddow and her crew seem desperate to avoid, but it gets worse. Here's Jen Psaki, another MSNBC darling, pulling the same stunt. It's not just Maddow. It is a network-wide con job. Now, why would they go to such lengths? Well, it's simple. They are terrified, terrified of being confronted of their years of bias reporting, their false narratives, and their role in dividing our republic. Don't believe me? Watch this. Hi, y'all. I was just wondering, um, you guys refused to report on the incompetence of Joe Biden, and I was just wondering if you guys were told not to report on that, 
or if uh, you guys really were that ignorant, the entire American public for some reason was able to see that Joe Biden was grossly incompetent and that he's been in cognitive decline for a long time. However, you guys just started reporting this. Dana, can I ask you about this? Dana, you're a respected reporter. Why is it that you guys just started to report on the, the, the decline of Joe Biden? Don't you feel like you have a responsibility to the public not to lie to them about the cognitive decline of Joe Biden? Sir, I'm here with CNN. I can't get very close to them because their security guard is blocking me. But we've got Jake Tapper here. We've got Chris Wallace. We also have Dana Bash. Now, I've been asking them why they have been lying to the American public about the mental decline of Joe Biden. None of you guys would like to respond to that at all? No? Dana, you're a very respected journalist. Jake, not so much respected, but people listen to you still. Would any of you guys like to uh, respond to Joe Biden's cognitive decline and why you guys lied to the American people about it for so long? Can you please take your hands off of it? So there you guys go, that's the media. They refuse to answer the questions of the American people. That's Savannah Hernandez, formerly with our own Next News Network and now a reporter for Turning Point USA, confronting CNN about their delayed reporting on Biden's cognitive decline. Notice the silence? That's what MSNBC is trying to avoid by hiding in New York and Savannah didn't stop there. Here's another example. Excuse me, Kristen, I have a question. Um, NBC reported that when was Trump was assassinated, attempted assassination, it was popping noises that um, was initially reported. Would you like to respond to that? No? Yep. All right, y'all, this is Savannah Hernandez, and this is actually Kristen Welkner right behind me of NBC News, the exact same network that reported after the attempted assassination of Donald Trump that it was just popping noises. Kristen, would you like to say anything? No? Would any, anybody, uh, a part of NBC, like to say anything about your faulty reporting? Not at all? Okay. So that's your mainstream media, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we have CNN here, we have MSNBC, we have NBC. So this week I'm really gonna try to ask all of these media members what their response is to their networks and this faulty reporting. Savannah confronted Kristen Welker of NBC News asking her about NBC's reporting on the attempted attack on President Trump was just popping noises. Welker refuses to comment along with the rest of the NBC crew in tow. This is the kind of hard-hitting journalist MSNBC is running from by faking their location. But the truth always has a way of coming out. Even Joy Reid got in on the act. It's not just one or two bad apples, it is the whole barrel. And get this, folks, while pretending to be at the convention, here is what Reid had to say. Watch universal um, kind of reaction that I'm getting, whether it's civilians or, you know, professionals, is really a deep concern um, and lack of confidence um, in not us at this table or us at MSNBC, but us as the media writ large. Hmm. And a fear that what's going to happen now is that the Republican Party will do what they do. They're in the middle of a campaign. They're, you know, the convention started today. But the media will acquiesce to trying to convince people that the things they've been experiencing for the last, you know, five, six years didn't happen. Hmm. Um, that the greatest purveyor um, and promoter of political violence, really, you know, since anyone can remember, um, since George Wallace, I think, you know, that we just haven't experienced that kind of open, you know, sort of citing or sort of incitement of violence or sort of luxuriating in the idea of violence. It's just not something we're used to anymore in American politics. And then we had to get used to that being a thing. Hmm. And people are concerned and expressing concern that we won't be the guardians of memory hmm. and that we will allow Donald Trump as he is, you know, bathed in the glory and grandeur of his party to rewrite himself as both a hero and a victim, that people who are the most vulnerable to not just the things he's done, but the things he's promising to do, and that that will then happen without a guardian saying, wait, right. stop. And then the media will acquiesce to this rewrite. And the people that I've been talking to don't accept the rewrite. Did you catch that? 
Reid's talking about a lack of confidence in the media, fear of rewriting history and concerns about political violence, all while participating in a blatant deception herself. The irony is thick enough to cut with a knife. She's worried about the media acquiescing to rewrites, but what do you call faking your location if not a rewrite of reality? Now let's be clear, this isn't about fancy production values, it's about trust, it's about honesty. If they're willing to lie about where they are, what else are they lying about? Now here is Taylor Hansen, a tenant reporter who has also previously worked with us here at the Next News Network, asking Jake Tapper tough questions about CNN's coverage. Let's watch that moment. Do you think that, you know, you essentially comparing him to Hitler over the past few years, you know, calling him a fascist, do you think that led to the rhetoric that ultimately led to the assassination attempt on his life? Mr. Tapper, do you have any comments to defend, you know, the uh, CNN described the assassination early on when early reports came out as they were essentially picking Trump up after he fell on stage. Do you have anything to say about that? Nothing to say, Mr. Tapper, about comparing Trump to, to uh, essentially Adolf Hitler saying that if he's elected, it's going to be the downfall of democracy. So as you see, uh, Jake Tapper and his uh, little security team, they don't want to say anything. Uh, he just was dead silent the entire time. Now, this is the same guy and his CNN news source that has quite literally compared Trump to Adolf Hitler reincarnated. So obviously we know that the media rhetoric has been put out in the past few years that was essentially saying that democracy is over if Trump is elected. So Jake Tapper, everybody, doesn't want to hold any accountability for his awful reporting over the years, if you can even call it that. I would say his awful activism over the years, so. This is what real journalism looks like, folks. This is what MSNBC is running from. And it's not just about confronting the mainstream media either. Watch this. We can, we can walk, I don't wanna make you late to anything. Great. Emily's been great to us. So obviously you predicted the assassination attempt of President Donald Trump. And then at the time, mainstream media, which you have a lot of experience with, they said that it was baseless, it was a conspiracy theory. How did you know? And what's your reaction to that? Well, you don't need to be Nostradamus. I mean, it was hardly a prediction. It was just a, an observation about trend lines. But the escalation was unmistakable. By the way, if you call someone Hitler, mm -hmm. we've been taught since childhood, this is like a sort of classic, you know, sort of ethics question. If you could kill Hitler, would you? Dietrich Bonhoeffer said yes. All decent people would say yes, because you save millions by doing so. If so, they call him Hitler, of course, someone's justified to kill him. You think they're partly liable? Well, of course. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Tucker. Thank you. Have a I great appreciate day. it. See ya. That's Tucker Carlson, a true journalist engaging in open dialogue about serious issues. He's not afraid to face tough questions and discuss real concerns. Compare that to MSNBC's Smoke and Mirrors Act. While Tucker's out there talking about the real issues affecting Americans, MSNBC is hiding behind fake backdrops. Now, take a look at this image, Maddow and Saki side by side pretending to be where they're not. This isn't journalism, it is theater. Even NBC News, MSNBC's corporate cousin, had the decency to send Savannah Guthrie and Lester Holt to Milwaukee. So why couldn't MSNBC do the same? Well, the answer is clear. They're not interested in reporting the news. They're interested in controlling the narrative, in avoiding tough questions, in maintaining their bubble of self-righteousness. This, my friends, is the state of mainstream media in 2024. The same mainstream media that YouTube calls authoritative news and artificially inflates in your search results. They're not just twisting the truth anymore. They're actively creating a false reality and they expect us to swallow it whole, but we're not buying it and neither should you. This is why independent media outlets like the Next News Network are more important than ever. We're not afraid to go there and be on the ground to ask the tough questions to show you the unvarnished truth. If you got value from this report tab, subscribe. My final thought is next. Now, the MSNBC deception we've uncovered isn't just about fake backdrops, it's about the death of real journalism. While Maddow and her cronies hide in New York, real reporters like Savannah Hernandez, Laura Loomer, and Taylor Hansen, they're on the ground asking the tough questions. They're not afraid to confront power, to challenge narratives, and to seek the truth. Now, I use LED screens too. You can see Chicago behind me, but I'm not trying to fool you. You know that I'm in a studio. It's about honesty, folks. This is the battle for the soul of American media. On one side, we have MSNBC's smoke and mirrors. On the other, we have the fearless pursuit of facts.
The choice is clear and we must demand better. We must support those who dare to speak truth to power like the people you saw in this report tonight. Because if we don't, the LED screens will win and our republic loses. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the next news network.